Welcome to the Engage Bible Podcast, hosted by the Roots Community Church. The Engage Bible Podcast exists to perpetuate knowing Scripture. Our hope is that through this podcast, you would be inspired to personally engage with your Bible and with fellow believers in conversation about Scripture. You can find out more about the Engage Bible Reading Plan and even download and print your own copy at engage.theroots.church. You can also contact us at engage at therootscommunity.com. Welcome to episode 38 of the Engage Bible Podcast. This is Casey Ball. I'm here with Russ Newkirk. Excited about what we get to read through today and talk about. Yeah, so this... A little bit unique. We've never yeah, done one like this before. It's going to be a little unique. Um, just the way that the the days of the month fell, um, we found an opportunity where we could not go through any of Luke's gospel um, and just focus on one chapter of Hebrews, a pretty important chapter, mm-hmm. Hebrews 11. You might have heard it called before the Hall of Faith. Um, it's awesome, mm-hmm. and I'm excited to just go through one chapter. This is the first and last time that we'll ever, ever be able do to do this. that. Yeah. yeah. Um, In an entire year of podcasting through the New Testament. Yeah. This is the one time we have yeah. one chapter for one week. And it worked out. Yeah. Um, because basically the the writer of Hebrews is going to walk you from creation <laughs> really? to where they're at presently. Right. Um, and uh, names all these different Old, Old Testament characters. And mm-hmm. it's cool. So we should probably just... Start at verse one. Verse one is a popular verse yeah. inside the um, church space, and sometimes used out of context, but um, it's powerful. It, it says this: "Now faith is," which is cool, right? It's, it's going to give you somewhat a definition. Um, faith is confidence in what we hope for and assurance of what we do not see. Mm-hmm. Which is, uh, I mean, we could talk about that for quite a while, right? That the confidence of what we h- hope for, there's something ahead. And we're confident of it. Yeah. And we have an assurance of we, what we don't see. Mm-hmm. If we could see it, it wouldn't take faith. Right. And if it was right now, it wouldn't take faith. But it's a hope ahead, an assurance of what we don't even see. Mm-hmm. And so it's a level of belief in something and this confidence and assurance mm-hmm. um, and a trust in something that doesn't seem to have tangible evidence currently. Sure. Right. And so um, now there's things that point to it. And there's other, other evidences that support and track record that supports right. why we have our faith in these spaces. But um, we'll see that the, 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 what we'll get into is all these stories of these people having these great, this great faith. And what you'll see is that they have a faith of something mm-hmm. or a hope and a, and a future or something invisible. But that is not a blind faith. They have that faith because they have had an experience with God and right. the truth of what God says. Right. It's not some sort of like, well, I can just come up with whatever I want and believe in something that I don't see, mm-hmm. and it has to happen because I have faith. You know what I mean? Yeah. But instead, God delivers a message to somebody, faith. Mm-hmm. So, um, yeah. I he, think it's um, yeah. cool that, you know, faith and hope are directly linked, right? Um, and what I think is interesting about the Christian faith, or really any religious or non-religious, everybody has faith in something. Yeah. Scientists have faith, have faith in the Big Something Bang. Something they can't prove. Did they see the Big Bang? Nope. No. Uh, they think it was bajillions of years ago. And, um, but, and not can't explain it. But everything from their point of view points to evidence of, of that. Right. But they still don't know that it happened that way. Sure. Um, they say it's based on fact. But the fact is that it's based on faith. Right. <laughs> yeah. Everybody's ideology at some point is going to come back a step to of faith. something that mm. is intrinsically seated in their heart that they are convinced of something right without perfect witness or sure. evidence of it and to be fair a lot of things you see don't really give you perfect evidence right because you see it from your perspective mm-hmm. so even if you said like well look here it is where i'm standing compared to where you're standing mm-hmm. they might believe different things based off that right sure we see that literally in the life of Jesus. <laughs> People see Jesus and some go like, Savior! And yeah, the others yeah. are like, Blasphemer! Right. Yep. Verse 2, this is what the ancients, love that title, were commended for. So he's speaking of basically the you know, Old Testament. Yeah, the ancestors. Patriarchs. The, yeah. 
the like, ancients. Do you think someday we'll be lay, way like if, if Jesus doesn't come back anytime soon? Do you think there'll be a time where we're references the ancients? I mean, our church is only five years old. What if our church is a couple hundred years old and people go like, oh, yeah, the ancients, they really believe that this is what we should be doing. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know if I'll be years, that thousands far of away. years. <laughs> I don't think I will. Uh, <laughs> Most people aren't. Most people that think there's something significant now, sure, they're not going to be remembered. You've got to do something really amazing or really bad. I don't know my great-grandparents' names in my own family. And if you go great, great, I definitely don't. Gone. You're talking just a few generations in my own family. You think people outside of that are going to remember you? Yeah. Yeah. Probably not. You're right. Way to smash everybody's dreams and hopes of being remembered (laughs) forever. That's why you do things with eternal purpose, right? (laughs) Hope things that last. Obviously, Jesus will be uh, in in full power then as much as he is now. Yeah. um, And be known. So that's good. Um. Verse 3, by faith we understand that the universe was formed at God's command, so that what is seen was not made out of what was visible. That's such a cool line. Yeah. What is seen is not made out of what is visible. So, like, yeah, look around you. See all that? Yeah. It didn't come from that. It came from something you can't see. It's it's always, like, you know, sometimes you just have those, those like, honest moments with yourself where you have doubtful thoughts, right? Yeah, for sure. Like reconvincing, sure. okay, I really believe this because all of these things, you know, right. and that's always one that I, I come back to of like, how can something come from nothing? And everything that we make that we take credit for, like we're across the street from people Construction building buildings, right now. Yeah. they're made out of something that was made, <laughs> right. you know, like we humans make nothing. We, we fabricate nothing. Everything right. that we make is made out of something that God created. Yeah. It's, Only it's, God holds that power. That's it. Right. We have no, um, we can be creative, but we're not creators Mm. like God. Yeah. And so we can, you know, we can innovate. We can use things to build things and think about things and, and even almost seamless like we invent, but even our, even that guy gets the credit for. Um, and so it's, it's just an interesting, you know, space, space to be in Yeah. where we are, we're created. (laughs) Like, and so uh, it it is cool. It's cool to think through. And I think that's where logic starts to fall apart in science. The fact that they want to make something out of nothing, but would tell you you can't make something out of nothing. Mm-hmm. That's hypocritical. And they would say that Christianity is hypocritical. You know what I mean? And yeah. so it, that's why we get so entrenched too, right? Because then you're both going like, well, you don't make any sense compared to your own statement. And they're like, well, you don't make any sense compared to your own right. statement. You know what I mean? And so it's like yeah. this, this back and forth. Yeah. That becomes difficult, but I love that it says by faith we understand it. Mm -hmm. Like, do you understand creation? Yeah. But my level of understanding of it is by faith. Mm -hmm. Like, I don't, I know what God says, his word says that he did. Mm -hmm. And I believe that. And everything that science is trying to understand is really just understanding how God did it. Right. Like the Big Bang, it's, it's possible. It's possible that God created that way where it was big and explosive. Yeah. And out of that, God formed the universe and the earth. And maybe it was billions of years. It doesn't, God's outside of time. He can, he's got, like, he can wait, you know? (laughs) In his hands. (laughs) Um, Wherever you land on your belief on creation, I don't think it really matters because what matters is God made it. Right. But all of science is trying to understand how how God did it. How is this made? How does this work? Yeah. Because we've done nothing. Right. (laughs) And you know what I love about it is the statements with science. I think maybe we've said this before. When it'll be like, science is fact. It's always truth. It's always, you know, something we can prove. Mm -hmm. And then they go, oh, we were wrong about that. It's actually this. Right. But science is fact. And it's proven. And and you're like, well, you just changed it, though. Like, Could it change? Right. If it was as specific as you're making it? I like science. I'm not against science. I think it's awesome. Yeah. And it's so cool to learn about how God has made things. Right. Um, but I think, yeah, trying to take him out of the equation or to say that those based in faith uh, don't really look to the facts is just inaccurate. Sure. Yeah. But it's cool that it starts out with that, is that it starts out from the, the very beginning of everything. Yeah. Here's what faith is. We're, it three, with we're three verses in. <laughs> yeah, we better start moving a little faster. But now it's going to go through kind of quick fire. 
yeah. of a lot of these Old Testament characters that maybe you've heard of, maybe you haven't. We've been in the New Testament this whole podcast. Yeah. Um, and it's weird because it you know jumps over Adam and Eve and then says, by, by faith, Abel. Adam and Eve saw God, right? They oh, that's a good him. point. Yeah. That's a good point. I, I didn't make that up. I, I was listening to a sermon that, this that, morning. That why it's not in and here. And he points that out. Like, it's not, yeah. Adam and Eve aren't mentioned because they didn't need faith. They, Which is interesting they walked with God. because their lack of faith is what had them <laughs> eat from what was forbidden. So, right. so maybe they did need faith. Um, but yeah, by faith, Abel, I don't think we're going to be able to read all this and make it in a timely manner. There's 40 verses, so maybe we should move a little quicker. Um, by faith, Abel brought God a better offering than Cain did. By faith, he was committed as righteous when God spoke well of his offering. And by faith, Abel still speaks even though he is dead. What do you think that means? I think he's with God in in the kingdom. So that's what it means by still speaks? Yeah. Oh, I just kind of thought of it as he is a representation of someone that moves in faith, and that still speaks to us, like his actions. I think he says something similar about someone else. Mm. And then they go, I, I love these next one, this next one. By faith, Enoch was taken from this life so that he had not experienced death. He could not be found because God had taken him away. For before he was taken... He was commended as one who pleased God. And without faith, it is impossible to please God because anyone who comes to him must believe that he exists and that he rewards those who earnestly seek him. Mm-hmm. I love this. And, and I've preached it several times um, because when you go back and reference the verse that it's referencing with him pleasing God, mm-hmm. it, it says he walked with God mm-hmm. and then was no more. Um, and so when when you kind of just understand that it pleased God that he walked with him. Hmm. Like he pleased God by walking with him. Um, That's cool. And so when you see that without faith, it is impossible to please God. Well, yeah. How do you walk with God without faith in God? <laughs> you know what I mean? And without faith, it is impossible to please God because anyone who comes to him, so coming to him even speaks to walking with him, must believe that he exists and that he rewards those who earnestly seek him. That, awesome. Yeah. That, he, that it's, it's better for you. And you must believe it's better for you mm-hmm. or you won't do it. You won't seek him. Right. You must believe. Yeah. So it's just a cool statement. And, and even, we should long to please God. And it pleases God that we walk with him, that, that we seek him, that we were with him. Yeah. The um, guy that I was listening to this morning was just pointing out like motives, you know, mm-hmm. like the Pharisees did actions that would have been pleasing to God had they had faith in God. Right. And so it's just kind of like a motive check of, in everything that we do to please God, what is it for? Right. Why are we, why are we doing it? Is it for our own like self-righteousness to puff ourselves up? Or is it because we just, we want to please God. We right. love God. We have faith in God. That's a good point. It, it'll jump straight from there to by faith Noah um, and talking about him building an ark before it's even raining. Right. Um, and that he condemned the world by his faith. It's an interesting statement. That is an interesting statement. <laughs> and became heir of the righteousness that he is keeping with faith. And I think it's, you know, speaking to the fact that the the story of Noah. Yeah. Um, People mocked him. and Yeah. Yeah. And they act as if nothing's going to happen. Right. And so his faith condemned them. Do you know what I mean? Like there's this, there's this. Uh, kind of like, kind of like Moses before Pharaoh, like sure. hardening his heart. Sure. Being a constant, like, there's Noah, he's stupid, you know, right. building his ark, which he did for 120 years. <laughs> it's a really long time. <laughs> Longer than all of us will live. Yeah. Um, most likely. Uh, pretty good. Yeah. Pretty good odds. <laughs> um, yeah, and that whole time people are just seeing it being like, that guy is so stupid. Like, and God, just thinking, God told I him don't to do believe that. this is going to happen. Yeah. Like, that's what they're saying. I mm-hmm. don't believe that... God's going to do this. Right. And so by his, him, by him actually doing it, it like defined this line of what faith looks like. Mm-hmm. And he's an heir of righteousness, it says, that comes in keeping in faith. And so it's just a, a cool line. Mm-hmm. And then it'll go to by faith Abraham. I don't think we should get into his whole story right there. Um, but um, it's awesome. And also it says by faith Sarah in that same thing. Yeah. Um, well, in 13 through... 16 is kind of like this break of like kind of exhortation which is interesting because it's between abraham and abraham <laughs> yeah he, he's he before it. and after it yeah. yeah he should read that read yeah that. it says all these people were still living by faith when they died they did 
not receive the things promised. They only saw them and welcomed them from a distance, admitting they were foreigners and strangers on earth. People who say such things show that they are looking for a country of their own. If they had been thinking of the country when they had left, they would have... You good over there? I'm good. They would have had opportunity to return. Instead, they were longing for a better country, a heavenly one. Therefore, God is not ashamed to be called their God, for he has prepared a city for them. So awesome. And I love that they finished their journey, Mm -hmm. still not seeing the fulfillment of the ultimate promise, but still believing. Yeah. Yeah, all these people died in it. (laughs) Like... It's With, amazing. They didn't get to see Jesus. Nope. But they they just knew that following what God said was right. Mm-hmm. And they knew that there was a better thing ahead. And and how hard is like People are not good at waiting and pushing off results. Like, it, we don't do very well with that. Mm-hmm. If I'm going to spend time or action or energy doing something, I want to see it now. Like, that's how we are. Yeah. And so for them to like spend their life. Right. Um, long lives long lives yeah yeah um and not see the complete fulfillment of what they were hoping for yeah but to stay strong in that kudos yeah like we could learn from that massively yeah play now pay later yeah or play now pay later Mm -hmm. (laughs) i remember that yeah um i think it's john maxwell is it i remember that from youth sermons though that's always stuck with me hmm well Whoever it was that was preaching that probably just <laughs> delivered it in such a great way <laughs> that it was memorable. So then he goes to Isaac, Jacob, Esau, yeah, and then to Joseph. Mm-hmm. Um, what did you say? What did you say? Isaac, Jacob, where's Esau? Esau? Oh, he blessed Esau. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. But he's not one of the by faith ones. No, no, no. Um, yeah, by faith Isaac, by faith Jacob, by faith Joseph, by faith Moses. By faith... Faith Moses' parents. Oh, yeah. It was his parents first. Yeah. Hit him and, for three months. Mm-hmm. Because no ordinary child. I'm like, all you other ordinary children. <laughs> what? All your children, ordinary. <laughs> Same with ours. They're no Moses. <laughs> Moses came out doing miracles. <laughs> He's <not an> ordinary <laughs> child. Um, yeah, then by faith Moses. And then, uh, you know, by faith it says that you know, even more by faith, Moses did this by faith, Moses did that. Um, and it, it says he, he persevered because he saw him who is invisible. It also says in verse 26, he regarded dis- disgrace for the sake of Christ as of greater value than the treasures of Egypt. I think it's interesting. He says mm-hmm. for the sake of Christ, hmm. mm-hmm. but we're talking about Moses, right? Way before Jesus is on the scene. Yeah. But understanding that there is a salvation found in the Messiah. Mm-hmm. Um, and he'd rather be with the people of God than associated with the treasures of anything else. Mm-hmm. Which is just really cool. It is. By faith, the people pass through the Red Sea. That's a pretty cool statement. It would take faith to it would. walk into hey, there's a, the walls. an ocean. Yeah, just go for it. <laughs> oh, I know. We totally would. <laughs> you Would you do it? I don't know. It would have to take a lot of faith. <laughs> it would take a lot of faith and probably some peer pressure. <laughs> Everybody's going through. Yeah, well, I guess we're going to die together. Here we go. <laughs> by faith, the walls of Jericho fell. That's awesome. Yeah. That, but, you know, because by faith, the people did what they were told. It doesn't make any sense <laughs> from a military standpoint <laughs> yeah. to go walk around. What's the tactic? Ah, uh, just walk around. We're and just going to walk around. And then walk around and be loud. And we're going to yell. Play the trumpets. Yell. <laughs> All right. Well, we did it. Way to go, guys. Um, and then this is an interesting one. By faith, the prostitute, yeah, Rahab, because she welcomed the spies, was not killed with those who were disobedient or unbelieving. So Rahab had a belief mm-hmm. in God, the God of Israel, the God of gods, <laughs> King of kings, Lord of lords, should I keep going? Um, that she believed, yeah, the God you guys serve, you spies, he seems legit. Mm-hmm. I'm going to go with you. I'm going to go, yeah, your God's the God. <laughs> I'm with you. And that her faith in believing that, yeah, that's the right thing to do is be on God's side. That she's in the hall of faith. Yeah. How cool is that? It's pretty cool. And when you look at a lot of these people, they also had some rough spots in their life. I mean, she's an obvious one because literally her name is oh, the man. prostitute. Yeah. yeah. But a lot of the other people. A lot some, of these guys. Oh, yeah. rough, yeah. rough. <laughs> d- d- bad things. Yeah. Um, 
but because of their faith in God, they moved in these ways right. um, that they're commended by believing God. Yeah. And then it, it'll kind of shift gears a little bit. Yeah, to the judges. Yeah, kind of, kind of get then, into a group idea, right? Yeah. Some judges and some kings. Yeah. Um, I'll read it. Yeah. 32. What more shall I say? I do not have time to tell about Gideon, Barak, Samson, Jephthah, whatever it is, <laughs> about David and Samuel and the prophets. So right all like, those. Yeah. Yeah, yeah right. That, this could, he's just going like, this chapter to keep going forever. Yeah. I can put the whole New Testament back into the context. It almost Hebrew. seems like he wants to keep going, he but he had written so long. He's I like, totally I got to stop. It. That's every week when I'm preaching. <laughs> he wants to start talking faster at the end. Like, oh, I'm not going to get done with this. I'm so sorry. I wish I had more time to talk. <laughs> yeah, and he says, All okay, here's these great people, and he names them. And then he doesn't even name the last one, right? And the prophets. <laughs> yeah. But then he goes into, I love this. This is one of my just favorite places. I, can't, I shouldn't say that. I say it every week. Yeah. In scripture, though. But I think a very helpful place in scripture for those that want to walk by faith and are confused about obedience and outcome that are confused about like correct expectations of what a potential outcome could be. And I mean that by, um, well, you'll see. It says, who through faith, after it names those guys and the prophets, this, these are amazing, right? Who through faith conquered kingdoms, administered justice, and gained what was promised, who shut the mouth of lions, quenched the fury of the flames, and escaped the edge of the sword, whose weakness was turned to strength, and who became powerful in battle and routed foreign armies. <laughs> Women received back their dead, raised to life again. Oh my goodness. So he goes down this list of, look at these amazing responses to faith. Like, mm-hmm. uh, look at like, God moving through these men's faith, right? So you, you could go through these different characters. You could look at just some simple short books, right? Like you look at Daniel. Mm-hmm. He's thrown into a lion's den. Right. And the mouth of the lion <clears throat> are shut. Right. Uh, or his homies, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Yeah, yeah. Who say, like, can God save us in this fire? Yeah, he can. Even if he doesn't, we're not bowing down to your idol. And they're thrown in and they come out. Like, they, they, like God is with them in the fire and they come out and don't even smell like smoke. Like, those types of examples are what's going on here. And we should pray for those. Like, God, yes, move in those ways. Like, let us, um, through the trials, come out on the other side. Um, but sometimes we think that because of the outcome of what we see with our eyes shows the level of faith that someone has or that their faith is commendable. And we think that people that have a, a rough outcome or a bad outcome are like, oh, they missed it. Mm-hmm. Oh, their faith wasn't strong enough. Mm-hmm. Oh, they, I mean, like fill in the blank, right? But I think that's why this is such a huge verse to help us get a, a good clarity of that's not always the case. This is, there were others. So it was on that list of these amazing, yeah, yeah, yeah. like, shut the mouths of lions and, you know, took out armies and gave people that were dead back. Yeah. And they were alive. Yeah. There were others. This is how their story went. Who were tortured, refusing to be released so that they might gain an even better resurrection. Refusing to be released, which is usually like renounce your God and then you can be released. Mm-hmm. And they're like, no. Some faced jeers and flogging and even chains and imprisonment. They were put to death by stoning. They were sawed in two. They were killed by the sword. They went about in sheepskins and goat skins, destitute, persecuted, and mistreated. The world was not worthy of them. They wandered in deserts and mountains, living in caves and in holes in the ground. Now listen to this. This is this is so key. These were all commended for their faith yet none of them received what had been promised since god had planned something better for us so that only together with us would they be made perfect they didn't get to see christ but we have christ and but he commends all of their faith Mm -hmm. these were all commended for their faith ones who shut lions or ones who were eaten by lions ones who stopped the flaming arrows ones who took them to the chest Mm -hmm. um and I think that's so huge. In fact, I heard I once heard Matt Chandler talking about these verses um, to a pastor's, like I think it was like a planting pastor's, or maybe it was like a Bible college, or it was young, a bunch of young dudes ready to go take on the world. Mm-hmm. And he basically said, like, some of you are going to have these great, impactful ministries, and some of you are going to go start these ministries and die doing it. 
Yeah. And both are commendable. Mm-hmm. So let us not judge based off of what we think success is. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think it's so good on a personal level. You might die having faith in the middle of this thing. Mm-hmm. And you were equally as obedient and have equally commendable faith as one that sees what, what seems like better result. So awesome. So awesome. Do you think that um, some of the, these uh, last verses here are kind of the New Testament things that are going on? I think they connect to the New Testament, but I yeah. think often, um, like several of them, I think, point to Old Testament prophets. Okay. Yeah. Gotcha. Um, because a lot of them did do those exact things and get sought Sought into. Sought into. Yeah. Killed by the sword. And I love go, that. And then line, go around though. in different ways. I mean, I was I was looking at Isaiah yesterday. I wish I remember the chapter I was looking in. But um, Isaiah, to prove a point, is like <laughs> naked. Like he's he's stripped and like without sandals, which seems like completely naked. And when you see how, to prove a point, yeah, yeah. And when you see how long it says he was, it was like two years or something ridiculous. Like it's this huge length of time, and you're like, wait a second. <laughs> to prove a point, prophetically. About what God was about to do to somebody. That was your lot. That was, that was your, your lot in life. Like some years. guys are like, get to be David and have these palaces. <laughs> and now David obviously had some rough times too. Rough, rough patches. He screwed it up multiple times. Too, totally. So. Um, but it's, it's interesting because too often I meet Christians that are like, yeah, but I just, yeah, you know what? But I get to be the healthy, wealthy Christian. And some people do got to go through hard things, but... I just know God's going to call me to the bet. I'm the hill, top of the hill, top of the mountain Christian. And you're the gully gutter Christian. Like, that's your lot. Um, and to be real, there's some level of that. But if if you are called to, like, live in this abund- abundance um, of what this earth has to offer, grace by God in that way, then the Bible would say that you're the one, like, everybody should look to you and what it looks like to be generous. Mm-hmm. Like, you're not given that so you can boast about, oh, look, I shut the mouths of lions. Right? Like, instead, you're giving it so that you can say, like, let me, God has blessed me so I can give. Like, that, that I would, you know, provide for those who lost others that were cut in half. Right, right. You know what I mean? And so, um, yeah, I think, I, I, I love it. I love this. I love the line, um, you already read it, but verse 38. Yeah. The world was not worthy Man, of them. Not worthy. Like, these guys had suffer such a rough lot, right? They, they're wearing these. It, 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 they're hiding. They're on the <laughs> run for their lives. Living in caves. Holes in the ground. And they like pop out from those places just to prophesy and have people hate them. <laughs> I mean, that's real. Yeah. Yeah. Um, well, I mean, Old Testament prophets never had something nice to say. Not they really. were like, God loves you. Like, yeah. they were God always like, day, God, God hates you and you yeah, need yeah. to turn from your sin or yeah. he's going to destroy you. Yeah. <laughs> and they would have great promises involved with that. Sure. But it would be based on repentance. <laughs> right. So they would usually start with like... It's not going to go well. Or I love, it, again, in Isaiah, um, when there's the verse that we quote all the time when, when God says, who shall I send? And Isaiah says, send me. Mm-hmm. And the next verse is, you're going to go preach and they're all going to have hard hearts because of your preaching. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody ever reads that. Nobody ever goes like, send me. And then you're like, okay, but when you preach, no one listens. It's right. going to be horrible for you. This is going to be the worst. <laughs> oh, great. This yeah. is awesome. Send me. We and, should. And again, we should always pray. For those other things. I want Christians to thrive. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think we're still doing it right if we get cut in half. Dang. As long as we're doing it by faith. If we're What we're doing is based on a hope and assurance of what God has promised and what we hold you know, dear to, to the fulfillment of those. Um, I think we're, we're adding our names. I mean, we don't just write it in your Bible, but like we're, we're considering what does it mean to be commended for my faith. Right. And what would be commendable. Right. You might get thrown in a pit, but you don't get to decide if lions are hungry or not. Bars. Um, we should probably read the first couple chapters of... Chapters? Excuse me, verses of chapter I know, 12. It connects so tight. Yeah, I think we sh- I think we do, and then just next week we... <sighs> but I don't know if look at it you again. should let me, because I really like those, and I feel like I'll oh, talk gonna, for a long you're time. you're going to spend time on them? All right, we'll, we'll look at it next week. Yeah, let's do that. Yeah. Because we'll, we'll just connect the chapter we just read and then read those. Cool. Well, we love you guys so much. Join us next week for another episode. We will see you then. Peace. Thank you for listening to this week's Engage Bible Podcast. We pray it is a blessing to you. We encourage you to go now and participate in your own reading of Scripture and engage with fellow believers in Bible conversations. As a reminder, you can access and print a copy of the Engage Bible Reading Plan at engage.theroots.church.